Good morning. Welcome to Fabrics World. Today, we'll discuss about chapter 3, Synthetic Fibers and Plastics. Every day in the morning, after getting up from the bed, what you do? If you're a student, you go to school. When you go to school, you have to wear the uniform. Say your uniform is white shirt and blue fant. And if you want to have the white shirt and blue fant, you go to your clothes showroom and ask the salesperson to show, show you the white shirt and white cloth and blue cloth. Then what happened? They will show you many varieties of white clothes in front of you. And you get confused. All are looks like white. Which one you have to choose? And the question comes that why are they showing many varieties of whites? Because those fabrics are of a different type. Maybe one white cloth is of cotton type. One white cloth is a polyester type. One white cloth may be of terracotta type. Similarly, the fans also. If you are an adult, you have to, if you are an employee, if you are an employee, you have to go to a company or an MNC. Then you have to wear a formal wear, formal, formal wear. Sometimes you have to wear informal wear. So based on the situations, you have to change your dress. Then you have to have many varieties of dresses. Many varieties of dresses means the dresses should have many varieties of fabrics. If you go to a, a women's wear showroom, the salesperson will show you many varieties of women's wear. As well as they will show you many saris. Varieties of saris, like silk sari, cotton sari, fabric, fi fabric sari, bleeding saris, blending saris. So many varieties of saris they will show you. The question is, of course today we have no doubt many varieties of clothes, very fashionable dresses we are getting available in the market. But how they are actually creating all these types of fabrics? Are these fabrics are naturally created or they are creating artificially? So to understand more about these fabrics and their types, let us start the class. In your lower classes, you learned about fibers, natural fibers. And the natural fibers are Natural fibers are cotton, silk, and wool. Because why they are called natural fibers? Because they are coming from either from plants or from animals. Thus, these are called natural fibers. But you have another type also. That we can say artificial fiber. But it has got another name and that name is synthetic fiber. And this is the category of discussion in today's class. Synthetic fibers, they are not created from the plants. They are not coming from the animals. They are artificially created. For example, polyester, nylon, Rayon, acrylic, terricot, terry wool, all this comes under synthetic fibers. Synthetic fibers not only used for making the clothes, it has got very wide applications in the industry. Using these fibers, you can create household materials also, household articles also. Now, how a synthetic fiber is look when in this type of varieties. To understand more about uh, how it look, let me give an example and from there we will move further to understand synthetic, synthetic fiber. You have a bead necklace like this. is a number of beads and these beads are connected to each other and form a, a perfect pattern 
and looks like a necklace. Now take paper clips. You just attach two paper clips together. Now keep on attach the paper clips together. So when you are attaching the paper clips together, then what you get, you get a pattern. A pattern which is having a similar type of paper clips or a pattern where you have wherever you see the same paper clip repeated and this paper clip is called a unit. So here the units are repeating and creating a structure. Similarly here also the beads are units. So this is bead necklace. This is paper clip structure. Both have the similarities. The similarity is unit is repeating. Here also unit is repeating. Here the unit is bead, here the unit is paper clip. And with the repetition of units, you are getting the structures. Similar fashion in synthetic fibers also. All these type of fibers inside the fibers, the, chem the components are arranged in this way. Synthetic fibers comes from the products of petroleum. I told earlier, they are not coming from plants or animals. They are coming from the products of petroleum. So, in those products of petroleum, the small, small chemical elements form as units and they are repeated in a regular fashion and create a structures like this. And each unit, each unit of chemical element, chemical element in synthetic fiber is called, is called monomer. Monomer, mono, mono means single. So each unit is called monomer. Now all these monomers are attached with each other like this and form a big pattern. And that pattern is called polymer. See, the word itself tells the meaning of that. Poly means many. In mathematics, you heard a word like polygon. Polygon means it's a structure having many number of sides. So, when monomers are arranged together, you will get polymer. So, synthetic fiber is a polymer structure. Now, we understand that what is synthetic fiber and what is natural fiber. Now, how would you identify whether a fabric is made by synthetic fiber or the varieties of synthetic fiber earlier discussed are made by natural fiber. And if you want to identify it, do this test, burning test. But careful, don't burn the whole the cloth. I am asking you to burn the thread taken from the cloth or you can see the thread is also called yarn. So take yarn like one meter or one and a half meter yarn you take yarn or you can say thread take it from the cloth different fibers like from cotton silk wool nylon acrylic etc rayon etc now what to do? Take the yarn from the cotton cloth and burn it. Similarly do the burning from the yarn taken from silk, wool, nylon, acrylic. If you get burning smell of burning of a hair burning of hair, then that arrow is belong to silk or wool. If you, if you 
how the sense of the smell of burning of hair when you burn the ends of ends of these fabrics then you have to identify that that is from silk or wool if you have the smell smell of burning paper burning of paper then it may be from cotton or silk wool cotton yeah if the yarn melts due to burning then that is from synthetic fiber that is synthetic fiber i mean that is maybe nylon or acrylic so in that way you can identify which type of fiber it is now we are going to discuss about three different types of synthetic fibers one is nylon the second one is acrylic the third one is rayon so the first one nylon see the board carefully it's a synthetic fiber and it is prepared from combination of coal water and air they mix the coal water and air in a perfect composition and after that what they do when they mix all these three components they will get a small units called polymides a chemical units inside the material and these polymides actually the collection of monomers and these are the monomers of hexa methylene diamine and adipic acid earlier i told you synthetic fiber is a polymer that means a combination of monomers monomer means identical type of units so here the monomers of hexamethylene diamine and adipic acid they mix together they create a similar type of small units called the monomers and this combination of monomers is a polymides now these polymides is in the form of solid chips and they are melted and after melted after melting they are forced through a special type of what you call device heated spinet so this heated spinet consists of very very tiny holes on the surface so when they force them this these poly polymides to the spinet so they passes through those holes next what happens next they solidifies as it cools when the solidifies and cools you will get the yarns based on the size of the holes you will get different varieties of yarns maybe the different variety in the uh, length of the yarn maybe the different variety in the thickness of the yarn so in these ways the nylon is prepared now what is the importance of nylon nylon is very strong very lightweight and elastic see the three different three were great great advantages of nylon it is elastic you can stretch up to some extent it is strong it don't break like a cotton thread it won't break like a cotton thread and it is lightweight because of the three important advantages of nylon it is used in many areas and those areas of applications if you see here many applications toothbrush bristles every day in the morning you brush your teeth and those bristles you are seeing those are made from nylon ropes fishing nets tents so fishing nets fishing nets they when they want to catch a big big fishes which are having heavy weight so they have to keep in mind that the net should be elastic they should stretch they should not break and nylon is the best material for that tents sarees bags curtains parachutes parachute will carry huge amount of weight the weight the weight of the box the weight of the person inside the box climbing ropes the mountaineers the mountaineers want to climb 
those are those people are called cliff hangers when they climb to the mountain the row should be very strong should be elastic and in those cases again nylon is the best useful material similarly umbrella clothes also made by nylon so now you want to test how strong nylon is yes you can test also very simple see here how strong the nylon is now take yarns of different fabrics yarn of cotton silk wool and nylon arrange the apparatus like this it is stand and here the th yarn is attached and the yarn is attached to a pan weighing pan now first of all suppose that you have taken cotton thread and keep on adding the weights on the pan up at one point the cotton thread breaks record a table cotton thread what is the weight you have applied so that it has broken now replace the cotton thread with wool again add the weights continuously till it breaks again you change with another fabric yarn now comes to nylon keep on adding the weights now observe this you after adding the weights for long for a long time nylon doesn't break because nylon is as strong as steel wire as strong as as steel wire that's why nylon is used in many varieties of applications and the second one since second second se synthetic fiber rayon rayon is the alternative to silk you know i know everyone knows that how fascinating fabric is silk everyone attracted by the silk but the problem is silk cloth is very expensive and is not affordable by every person and the second problem is making and maintaining silk is also very difficult and time consuming task that's why from many years scientists were trying scientists were tried to find a alternative to silk which should come it in less cost that means it should be cheap and they have succeeded and they have found the rayon now this rayon if you see the texture fascinate us that's why we are so much attracted towards silk or silk type of rayon now i told you rayon is a synthetic fiber but rayon main source is wood or bamboo pulp now you can have a doubt earlier i told that synthetic fibers artificial fiber should not come from animals or plants but rayon materials source is from wood and bamboo pulp then how could we say it's a synthetic fiber yes it is synthetic fiber only because from the wood and bamboo pulp it's not made from the pulp it gets a particular type of chemical called cellulose and from the cellulose directly is not coming the cellulose undergoing many chemical reactions and the last product is rayon that's why it is synthetic fiber now how it is made it is prepared from sodium hydroxide carbon disulfide and cellulose mixture which is called a polymer and this polymer forces through spinet a plate which is having very very tiny holes and from the holes the ants are formed and those ants the those ants are into solutions of dilute sulfuric acid and from there the rayon fabric is prepared the advantage of rayon is absolutely it is alternative to silk and it's very cheap affordable every person can buy the rayon and it's very fashionable because in rayon you can mix the colors so that you get different colored fabrics and other advantages of rayon is rayon can be mixed with cotton a natural fiber and used for bed sheets it is mixed with wool used for carpets used for fashion furnishings and bandages so you have so many advantages using rayon but one disadvantage is there 
the disadvantage is rayon absorbs the water so much because of absorption of water the ion becomes so weak and after a few days the ion will break yes so we had discussed about two types of photosynthetic fibers but today in the modern world we are mixing the fibers and we are creating many types of fabrics to have more quality to have better texture and to have attraction by the people on the clothes when you mix the synthetic fiber with one or more natural fibers that process is called blending if you go to any cloth showroom when you see a particular type of shirt it looks like silk it looks like cotton also so you'll be confused whether it is cotton shirt or it's a silk shirt when you ask the salesman he will say that yes sir it is a combination of silk and cotton why why they made the combination silk and cotton the first advantage is that see cotton cloths if you wear cotton cloths if you buy they shrink into the shrink they shrink because of the water they absorb more amount of water right but silk is not like that silk does not uh, absorb the water much silk is not wrinkled so if you have the combination of cotton and silk then what happened you can avoid the limitations of one fabric from the other you are avoiding the limitation of cotton or you can reduce the limitation of the cotton due to silk similarly you are reducing the limitation of silk from the cotton so when both are combined create a fabric which is a mixture of cotton and silk then it is a wrinkle free and is very attractive more beautiful cloth you will get so that's why in this modern world they are doing this blending process see these varieties the combinations rayon plus cotton rayon plus wool nylon plus polyester polyester plus cotton or polyester wool so by these combinations you have many advantages take one example here polyester and cotton and let told you cotton is so much comfortable to wear but cotton is not wrinkle free but polyester is wrinkle free if you have the combination then your clothes should be so comfortable so good looking and wrinkle free and of course it will reduce the irritation coming from chemicals also so far we have discussed about two types of synthetic fibers nylon and rayon now the third one is acrylic now in the winter seasons what type of fabric you wear yes you know that it is wool wool sweaters mufflers monkey caps all wool wool type of clothes only wear but in india each and every person has to wear the wool made sweater then think how many sheep are required how many sheep skin is required is it possible that we have plenty number plenty amount plenty number of sheep to prepare the woolen uh, sweaters is not possible that's why the people try to have alternative to wool that's why i keep on telling you necessity is the mother of invention when you have the necessity then you start think when you start thinking the thinking process started then you will invent the things in the similar way the people invented the new type of fabric called acrylic which is exactly similar to wool but not wool it is a artificial fiber now that's what is called fake fur it is prepared from the mixture of coal oil water air and limestone now that mixture is undergone two types of uh, two varieties of spinnings dry spinning and wet spinning in dry spinning what happens it dissolved polymers extruded in warm air in wet spinning the those same dissolved polymers i told you polymers are a mixture of monomers so those dissolved polymers extruded into a bath and then dried so it, when they are ent ent entered into the bath it is called wet spinning 
So after that happened, after that process happened, the ants will be prepared. And using those ants, they will create the fa fabric. And it is cheap comparing to woolen fabrics. That's why today we have many varieties of advantages of acrylic fabrics. If you go to a woolen, uh, if you go to any shop, if you ask the sweater, muffler, or monkey cap, they will show you. But you don't identify whether it is wool or whether it is acrylic yarn. So see the different advantages or different applications of uh, acrylic fa fabric. It is used in socks, sportswear, sweater, carpets, luggage, vehicle covers. So in that we have so many advantages using synthetic fibers. But you have disadvantages also. I already mentioned you. Synthetic fiber catches the fire very fast. That's why when you wear the synthetic fiber clothes, you should be far from the fire. You should not work near to the fire or near to the machines or near to near to the gas stoves, etc. Now another type of synthetic fiber is polyester. Polyester is not the new thing for you. If you go to clothes showroom, if you ask the salesman to show different clothes, obviously he shows the polyester in addition to different fibers. So polyester, in the polyester one type of is terlin. When the terlin mixed with cotton gives terricot. When the terlin mixed with wool gives terry wool. I told you earlier, this mixing is what called blending. Because of the blending, the limitations of what you have in one particular fiber will be reduced by the other fiber. The same example, the same advantage you have like uh, what do you call polyester cotton combination, the similar advantage of terlin and cotton. It's a wrinkle free, comfortable to wear. Now, how it is prepared? So, polyester is prepared from the combination of dicarboxylic acid and dihydric alcohol. This combination we give polymers. And from the polymers, the ants of polyester will be created. In the beginning of the class, I have mentioned you that synthetic fibers not only used for making the fabrics, they are used for household articles also. Polyesters are used for bottles, soda bottles, to boats. You may heard the word called pet bottle. If you go, if you go to a shop and ask a Coca-Cola drink, a thumbs up drink, any soft drink, and they will give a pet bottle to you. And those pet bottles are made from polyester only. When you go to a shop and ask for soft drink, ask for oil packet, ask for milk packet, jam packet, all these are came with some bottles. And you know that those bottles are, those bottles are packings are made by plastic. Earlier I told you that from polyester you can get one type of plastic called PET. On those plastics and bottles, if you observe carefully, you can see some symbols like this. These are triangle symbols, inside you have some numbers and they have some significance. And if you have see the number like this, then it is representing PET. PET means polyethylene terephthalate is one type of plastic and it can be recycled. If you see like this, number 2, HDPG, see here, high density polyethylene. Number 3, PVC, polyvinyl chloride. This PVC metal used for the pipes, water pipes. LDPG, the fourth number, low density polyethylene. If you see the fifth, polypropylene. Sixth, polystyrene. And seven, other types of plastic materials. In one, in, in one investigation, a statistical uh, survey, scientists were told that we have more than 60,000 plastics, varieties of plastics. And here I mentioned only six to seven types, but we have more than 60,000. So all we are depending upon the plastic. 
So there are many advantages of the plastic. At the same time, you have some drawbacks using plastic, like a two faces of a coin. So plastic is also coming from the products of petroleum. Plastic is also is also made from synthetic fibers. If you see this board once, plastic mainly classified into two types: thermoplastics, thermosetting plastics. Thermoplastics means when it is heated, it will be deformed. It goes to deformation state. That means it, is, it changes its state and settle in the new state. So it is very weak. Thermosetting plastics, when it, is, it gets heated, it doesn't deform. It will be in the same state as it is in initial state. Example: Take a normal plastic bottle, Tupperware plastic bottle. Pour hot water, very very hot water in normal plastic bottle and Tupperware plastic bottle. Then observe. Normal plastic bottle, it bends, deforms. Thermoplastic it is. Tupperware, it doesn't bend. Thermo setting plastic. Why it has happened like that? Because it is due to the changes in the arrangement of the elements inside. And there are two types of arrangements. One is linear arrangement, and the second is crossed linked arrangement. In linear arrangement, all monomers are linked in a linear fashion. That is happening in thermoplastics. That's a weak. In cross linked arrangement, they are linked crossed. That means they become very strong. And that is in the case of thermosetting plastics. And this thermosetting plastics, again, we have two types. Bakelite and melamine. Both are plastic type only, but in different applications we have specific type of plastic. Bakelite used in the handles of utensils, electric appliances, and switchboard. It is used in this type of applications because it is poor conductor for electricity. Now, melamine. It is used in kitchenware, floor, computer, and TVs. So these are very less examples I gave you, but you know, I know, everyone knows that in, in in each and every area in our life we have plastic. I can say, after air and water we have plastic. It has become that much important today because of its wide applications, because of its strength, because of it is very less cost. Okay. But you have the other side of plastic usage. You have disadvantage of plastic also. Plastic is polluting the environment around us. As we are using the plastics, let's like say plastic covers, the polythene covers, and after using it, we are throwing into the uh, throwing into the dustbin. Now all this plastic which are thrown into the dustbin, they collected, they they they, they are taken to dump yard. Now after going to dump yard, what happens there? Is it decomposing there? No. Decomposing only happens for certain type of materials. And we can classify those materials as biodegrade and non-biodegrading materials. So in biodegradable materials, actually what happens, those materials when you when they dump into the dumping yard, after a few days they divide into small fragments. And after a few days, it, they will mix with the air. In that way, they decompose. Examples, the peels of fruits, peels of vegetables, paper, cotton, etc. Now take the plastic. It is non-biodegradable material. It won't be decomposed. Or it takes so many years to decompose. So in that way, it is stay in the same dumping yard, create so many poisonous gases, and creates so much of bad smell. Even if you burn it, it creates poisonous gases to you. But taking the, by breathing those gases, it will give harmful effects to your body. The Indian government once announced that plastic is very, very dangerous than atomic bomb for future generation. So each and every person should be aware that how to use the plastic and how to 
how to degrade the plastic. So in, in, that, in that course, they have released a logo like this. This logo is in triangular shape. In many plastic materials, you can see this type of triangular shape. Not only plastic, paper cups, paper glasses also you can see. This is called 4R mantra. What is, what is new 4R? See here. Reduce, recycle, reuse, recover. So reduce. The first R tells reduce means reduce the usage of plastic materials. How far it's possible? You have to reduce it. Or you can recycle it. All plastics cannot be recycled. Some plastics are recycled, can some plastics cannot be recycled. In the previous context, we discussed about uh, six types of plastics. In the, the, the category number one, category number two, category number six can be recycled. Rest of them cannot be recycled. The thick plastic covers can be recycled. The thin sheets cannot be. That's why government banned thin polythene bags, which are used for carrying the vegetables, carrying the small articles. But till today, even the government has declared we, in, if you go to the market, you can see there are many, 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 I mean, many collections of thin plastic covers in the vegetable market. No one is asking the salesperson. Even though we are educated, we are also not stopping using usage of those thin plastic covers. As an educated person, it is your responsibility, my responsibility to stop using those thin plastic covers and we have to carry the cotton bags or we have to carry the, the paper bags. The third one, reuse it. Recently, government has declared that because the, in, in the dumping yard is getting huge amount of dump and they are unable to control the, the dust of plastic materials. So, government has suggested to go with a recover. Recover means take hold the dump, convert into useful fuel like biomass, decompose under the ground. When it decomposes under the ground, under the soil for many days, it, it releases some different types of gases like methane. Methane used as a fuel. So collect the methane using pipes and use the methane for the gas stoves in alternative to LPG. Or burn the dump and after burning the dump, what is the heat you are getting? From the heat, you produce the electricity. So in that fashion, you change a unused material into a used one. This is what called a recover. So you please follow all these four instructions because this is your generation. You should have the awareness and should create the awareness to your friends and the people that don't use plastic. If you use the plastic, follow these four R rules.